Carlin, what's up? Good morning, my friend. So, full disclosure, I have zero clues what I'm doing today. So, I happen to be walking around my craft room collecting random items so that I can see what comes about. So when I am lacking, I was going to do something in the planner, but that got changed. So when I am lacking motivation, you're in bed. Hey, well, that's all right. I'm, this is my second cup of coffee and this, these are ginormous cups of coffee. So, hey, it's all good. Um, I'm gonna grab this. So I'm just showing you that, um, again, like as I'm lacking motivation, I like to grab random things and try to make something wicked cool out of it. And here's what I'm looking for. So I need a stamp set. I need something. Something floral, something whimsical. All right, I grabbed bees and I grabbed affable anemone. Can you tell that I was in my alphabetical order um, bins? Everything, all of my stamp sets are all in alphabetical order. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm <laughs> seriously not sorry. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a sneak peek because the um, color decks swap for February is going to be Think Pink. And... I know that when a lot of people think pink, they're going to think like fuchsia, like bubblegum pink or, you know, like super girly, um, look at me say that with so much disgust, super girly, weird pink. Hi, Jesse. Um, so it occurred to me that I love that you both are watching. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so it occurred to me that if I did this beforehand, it would get you guys excited for the um, swap, but um, it could also like get you some ideas of what to do. So I would love for you guys to um, join the swap. I'm sorry, my brain is not firing on all cylinders yet. I would love for you guys to join the swap. You can use any color decks cards. They don't have to be sweet sentiment and you can use any, um, supplies. Again, it doesn't have to be sweet sentiment. I like to use sweet sentiment stuff, obviously, because it's my favorite stamp company. <laughs> Go figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to figure out what I want to do. So first of all, I used that color decks angled card and I cut out two color decks cards. These are double sided. They're very shabby chic. Um, and I really wanted to do something that was, you know, kind of in that, that vintagey feel. Um, right. I totally share the brain today on both phones side by side. <laughs> hey, I mean, my husband and I send each other, um, memes and stuff as we're sitting on the couch next to each other because, you know, it's a thing. So I'm glad y'all are with me. So I've cut out little um, tabs. These you fold in half. I've cut out the cards themselves and I've cut out pieces of Sweet Sentiment coloring paper. I also have some brushes. I've chosen a very soft palette because again, I want this to be um, super soft and whimsical. So I've chosen Victorian Velvet, Saltwater Taffy, and Vintage Photo. 
I've chosen a length of lace. Um, this is just very simple lace and it was white, but it has been tea dyed. So I might actually use some of the saltwater taffy and stain it a little bit more to be a little more pink. Um, I've chosen to put the wood side, the wood grain on this side and the pink on this side because I really want to um, do kind of both sides. The bees I've picked out and mine are totally destroyed because I stamped for planning by the beach. I stamped a gajillion bees. And then I have my affable anemone. Okay. So I'm going to set all of this crazy stuff aside. I'm going to grab my Misty. And again, I want this to be a super soft feel. So I'm going to color in very light colors and I'm going to start by using my um, what's the word? Oh my gosh. Hi, little sister. I'm going to start by using my um, memento desert sand. Yep. That's the word I was looking for that whole time. I know. I know. I'm telling you. Okay. So I don't want this all the way down in the corner. I've decided. So I'm going to put this at the four so that I can do something a little more artsy fartsy like that. I obviously need to be drinking this. My cousin got me this coffee cup because she loves me. It is massive. It's like having a bowl of coffee, which y'all know that's my jam. I'm gonna use my espresso. Ah, so pretty. I usually, when I'm stamping in desert sand, I stamp twice. And then I'm, since I'm making two cards, I'm going to just go ahead and put this next card right on here. Howdy, Holly. What's for lunch today? I am doing this on your request. This is a preview to the February. Um, yes, thanks. Hobos. Oh my gosh, I haven't had a hobo and I can't even tell you how long. Um, this is a preview to the February color deck swap. The theme is going to be Think Pink. So I'm doing this so you guys can get your wheels a turning. Now, again, I'm going to line this up at four. And since this is so light and I'm going to cover over it, I'm not really concerned if they overlap one another, but I'm going to put that there. Um, you're seeing it right now. Nobody knows that the theme is Think Pink yet because the swap doesn't post until February 1st. But I just have so much to do in life right now that I am going to go ahead and do this now to get it out of the way. So that's what I mean by preview. Um, right now, Sandy is doing the ATC swap. And the ATC swap is do your thing. And I need to finish that. Um, I have done like three of my cards and I have like 
only a couple days to get them into the mail for Sandy. So I really got to work on those. But I took them all the way to Texas so that I could work on them when I was there. And then, lo and behold, I didn't have time. So I brought them all the way home. So they're very well traveled. Hi, Trina. Okay, so I've put these on here. Line my stamp back up. Ooh, that could fit. If I am very careful, that could fit. Okay. This is me gaining ideas, like, as I'm right here in the moment doing it. Just so you know. I am, like I said, very ill-prepared for this live. And that's okay, because I want to show you guys that... Not everything has to be perfectly planned out to be beautiful. So I'm going to put this little bee up here. I'm gonna use my mini espresso. These are called Press Pops. They're brand new. They are so cute. Um, Harlan and Joseph, are you guys going to the Sacramento show this year? Or are you traveling abroad again? Of course. Yay. Michelle, you do. Hi, Pixie. Good morning. Um, good. I'm hoping that perhaps I can have one of you help in my class or both of you or whatever. If y'all don't want to take the class. Um, and they don't, if they don't give me a volunteer. I would be honored to have one of y'all help in my class. Everybody's still in bed. <laughs> right, Holly? Hey, Michelle, I have um, good news for you that's... Um, not public knowledge yet, but elbow, elbow, wink, wink. It's something you're definitely going to want to know about. I've run out of space on my desk to put stuff. Okay. So I'm going to put my Misty aside. I'm going to put my stamp set aside or my stamp pad aside and we're going to color. So let me grab my Thing here and let me zoom in for y'all. Bloop. Now again, I want to color in very soft colors because I'm making this kind of vintagey feel. Um, I will tell you, you can DM me later, Michelle. It is something you are going to be specifically excited about, but I know that you need notice, so that's why. I Okay, so I'm gonna start with very soft, vintagey type colors, and I'm not gonna use a lot of colors, which I know, gasp. <gasps> um, but that's just me. So I'm gonna show you my thought process on picking out colors. I have my hex chart. I'm gonna come up here to this top corner, and I'm gonna look like in this area for kind of muted tones, softer tones. I still want a shadow, so I'm gonna start with like RV34, I think is a beautiful shadow 
or even R56, but I know that's a lot more red than what's showing on here because this hex chart is from a long time ago. So it has color faded some. So I think I'm gonna go RV34 and RV32. which ironically enough are right next to one another. And then I want to bring it into that kind of more brown sort of feel and um, sort of warm it up a little bit. So I think I'm gonna pop over here to like R12. Okay, so see how I'm going over towards, oops. See how I'm going over towards the brown some. Um, no, but I mean, good on you. <laughs> That is not a goal you want, honey. <laughs> I promise. All right. The center of the flower is usually a black or a dark brown. And I'm going to tell you, you guys, if you don't follow Joseph and Harlan on Facebook, you actually really need to because they go out on walks all the time and they post pictures of flowers and nature all around them. Birds, flowers, bugs, all kinds of stuff. And they're fantastically beautiful pictures. And I draw a lot of inspiration from these photos on colors to pick for my flowers and that sort of thing. They live in California, so they have a huge array of flowers available to them that is on their nature walks all the time. And so um, this anemone I'm actually coloring because one of the flowers they posted a little while ago was like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But it was very muted colors because it's very early in the season. So that's where I'm going with this, in case y'all wanted to know. Not that you needed to know, but in case you wanted to know. So I'm gonna use the 40s. The E40s tend to feel to me like a um, brown paper bag. And so that's why I'm choosing them. Oh, I love your photos. You post the most gorgeous photos all the time. And um, you have a regular espresso, right, Michelle? So here's a regular espresso. Here's a press pop. Here's a press pop and here's the pond magnet. Yes, very classic. So I'm gonna use kind of a stippling technique for the center and then for all of these little stamen out here. And then I'm gonna brush from the center for the connection of those stamen. Same with this one. With the stippling technique, I hold my marker very close and I hold it straight up. Also for this brushing technique right here because I want the most control over my marker. So to have more control, you hold it closer up and the smaller the dots are, the more vertical you need to hold your marker. Yeah, there's only five colors, Michelle. So um, pink, teal, white, black, and purple. Now you can see how soft, I know, but we have cut down on the colors because it's way too hard for us to keep up with it. Um, way too hard. So this marker I'm holding way further back 
because I don't need the same amount of control. I'm using the side of the nib because I want to add a lot more ink to this to kind of make all of those bleed together a little bit. Okay, and there we have the center of our flower. Now, I'm going to go to RV34 and I'm gonna move that because I'm gonna be moving my paper a lot. I will tell you I am better at brush strokes towards me today apparently because that's the way it's gonna happen. And since I'm only using three colors, you're gonna see me pick up my markers a lot because two of my colors don't really go together. And so instead of tip to tip blending, I'm just gonna work fairly fast. So I will be going back and forth between my markers a lot. So if you are somebody who does a lot of tip to tip blending um, or somebody who is new to the Copic game and you don't have all of your markers yet, you can actually work really quickly before the alcohol evaporates and get those markers to blend a little bit better. And you can work back and forth with them. I think there's subtitles. Michelle, I have to auto captioning going. It's a feature on Google Chrome. Oh, well, there you go. I know that after I post them, it, the subtitles come up. But if you notice, working slightly quicker, I can make those colors blend a little bit better. Isn't that pretty? So that's why I switch back and forth between my markers a lot, especially when I'm doing three color blends and especially when I know that my colors don't really match super well. And no, leaving them on my desk like that is not going to dry them out. I don't suggest it for a super long period of a time, but while you're coloring, it's completely fine. stand so I have a little bit of extra room. So just a different technique for you guys, one that you don't see me use very often. Um, it's kind of a fun technique because um, you guys know that I teach very psychologically. And the longer it takes you to make these brush strokes and the longer you focus on them, the more um, similar they will be. And so I always tell people in my classes that if you want random and you want these to look more organic, you got to move faster. And the faster you go, the less similar they will be. So this helps you. You can use a glass mat instead of tip to tip blending. However, it's, it's, you have to work really fast to do that because alcohol is a solution that as soon as it hits the air, as soon as alcohol mixes with oxygen, the alcohol will evaporate. And so what happens when you're using a glass mat is that um, you are trying to mix two things that don't mix, first of all, but then secondly, the oxygen dries out the alcohol and you're left with just pigment sitting on your glass mat 
and if you don't have that carrier solution in your pigment, you're going to end up clogging your nibs. So I don't suggest it unless you have a very specific thing that you're doing. The point of tip to tip blending is never use this stuff, never use this stuff. This is the equivalent of the gum underneath the table. <laughs> so you really don't want to do that. So, um, Michelle, I would say like, even for me, I'm not professional enough to make a glass mat work on my tip to tip blending. That's why it's called tip to tip blending. And if you're using something much, much lighter, so say that you have like, um, an ROO and you're mixing it with this RV 34. When you do that, the amount of colorless blender solution that is in the ROO will dissipate that uh, pigment super duper fast. And so when you do that, um, you need to do that directly on top of the paper or you're gonna end up washing out a bunch of that stuff. So that's why you do tip to tip right here instead of out here. You have to do it right here to make it work. Hopefully that helps you. So like if I color this flower differently, and I'll just show you, I'm gonna color all the dark pink first. Of course, I love that you ask questions because I'm sure somebody else is thinking it. And so using the glass mat is just a different kind of blending. And like I said, honestly, I don't really recommend it unless there's a specific thing you're doing with it. So notice, now that I'm not working one color right on top of the other, you can see the difference in the level of blending I'm getting. And if I want to blend this really well, I have to go over it again. So this, again, is one of those things, the faster you work, the more smooth of a blend you're going to get because that alcohol hasn't already evaporated. So you'll end up noticing the colors are slightly different in this flower, even though I've used the same. Hey, Linda. Hi, Milligan. So because the alcohol has already had a chance to dry, you will notice that this flower looks a lot more separated. It's pink and orange as opposed to one color. So this is like a gradient of one color and this is definitely two colors that have been mixed together. So hopefully that um, helps demonstrate that for you, Michelle. I like those questions. Now I can go back over this if I want and try to blend those colors even more. But I mean, to me, I don't mind because in nature, flowers are all different colors. So I always tell people that, um, right? <laughs> Who knew? I always tell people that when you're beginning your coloring journey, the best thing that you can do is color botanicals because they are the most forgiving. Thank you all for joining me here this morning. I sure appreciate it.
if you're watching the replay, I appreciate that too. <laughs> That's my customer service voice. <laughs> hey, Michelle. You know it. Deanna, good morning. Just want to say that my coloring journey started with the rainbow unicorn. It did, it did. My coloring journey started with a healthy dose of reality because I picked up something and started coloring it and I learned very quickly that I was not talented in the coloring department. <laughs> and I had a lot of work ahead of me if I wanted to color like those people online. So yeah, my coloring journey started with a very hefty dose of reality. Not staying long, but would you please stop sending your cold weather down here? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I told my friend in Canada, I'm like, uh, your weather's drunk and it's in my front yard again. You need to come get it. <laughs> so you're probably saying the same thing to me. I've been in reality ever since. I just went back to found the flower pick that you, wait, flower pick that you mentioned. I'm pondering making a Facebook album to share these in a location. That would be fantastic. I have a directory of these on my computer. I just haven't pulled all of them to Facebook. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, Harlan, that's a large undertaking because I know there's a lot of photos, but I mean, you can definitely see where I got, it's not the same type of flower, but you can definitely see where I got the color inspiration from, can't you? It's funny how one little thing can really inspire an entire project. Um, I, last night my project was inspired by Rachel Myrick. She is ugh, just an amazing human and takes on so much. And she told me, make a Valentine's Day card. And I was like, ew, I don't like Valentine's Day. And she goes, well, make an anti-Valentine's Day card. And I was like, again, ew. Um, this is me when I'm like, hey, what should I make on my live? And then every suggestion, I'm like, uh, ew. <laughs> and so um, I was like, I have to use a stamp set that is in stock. So, or a digi that is, you know, on the website. I can't make something you know, make a whole video of stuff that I can't sell, you know, obviously, because if you guys see you, me use it and you're inspired by it, you want to purchase it. So, you know, I have to use stuff that's in stock. And she was like, oh, okay, well then I don't know what to tell you. Let me go look. Well, at the same time, it's a little bit funny, this feeling inside, um, go through and cut them out. It's just a massive dumping ground. Oh, cool. It is too cold to get out of bed. Super true. Um, so my cousin was like, hey, I just colored this cowgirl from Howdy. And I would really like to see you color it. Because I need more instruction. 
And so I said, okie dokie. And so that's where the whole thing came about last night. And it's right here if you want to see it. Is it came about because Lena wanted this girl colored. Rachel wanted a Valentine's card. And this technique where you stamp on top of the stencil. Um, Holly had posted a card where she stamped on top of the stencil a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to do that. So all these things in my life around me are where I draw inspiration from. So oftentimes when, you know, people ask me, okay, if you get that, like that block, not writer's block, but stamper's block, if you get that block, like where your mojo is just missing, what do you do? Like, how do you get back in the groove? And I always say my, my biggest go-to is florals because you can pick three markers or five markers or seven markers, or if you're me, 10,000 markers, but whatever. Um, and go for it and just use those markers and over and over and over again, as you see me doing, you just color. And there's not a lot of thought that goes into it. It's just coloring. You don't have to worry about choosing all these colors. You don't have to worry about um, composition. You Most of the time you don't even really have to worry about light source or anything like that. You just pick a method and you start coloring. And generally that gets the mojo back and that gets you coloring again. So like for me, I put things in my pocket and I think, ooh, when I lose my mojo again, that's what I'm gonna do. And so generally speaking, I go to Harlan's page and I find all the pictures of his beautiful flowers. And I think, ooh, gosh, that's a beautiful color on that flower, I'm gonna put that in my pocket and I'm gonna use that when I lose my mojo. And so um, I go to Holly's page and I find a lot of techniques and stuff and I think, Ooh, I've never tried that because she's a very different stamper than what I am. And so she posts a lot of techniques and stuff of things that I don't do normally. And so I draw inspiration out of that. And I think, oh, I'm going to try that. And then I go to my friends and I say, hey, you choose for me. What? Would you like to see me color? And those three items together will always get me out of a slump. So there you go. There's my method. There's the method to my madness right there. My secret weapons. Nature photos. Technique photos of other people's cards and my friends. The hat trick. The trifecta of inspiration. So you can do the same thing. You can go into Sweet Sentiment and you can look at all the cards that all of the design team has posted and stuff. And you can say, hey, that's awesome. I want to do something like that. And then do it. Okay, so now I have my flowers done. Now we're going to do the little bumblebee. And are y'all still there? Or did I totally bore you with all of that? Hi, Auntie. I didn't even know you were here. So my bumblebee, I'm going to do lighter colors again because we're doing this whole softer thing. So I'm going to do soft, soft colors. Oh, my echo has a notification for me, probably that there's a new episode of my podcast because it's episode day. Okay, so I like to start by doing the head 
black. eyeball back here and then this little antenna and this little antenna that's his wing and that's his other wing so then we're gonna come under here to color his eyeball I'm gonna go ahead and color his little feet and legs And just barely touching the paper and the reason the cap is still on this marker is because this is W6 and I use it a ton so I know that it is a little bit light right now and I should probably fill it but I haven't got to do my marker maintenance yet so I'm sorry yellow black yellow black Still here figuring out my dex cards without ripping off your idea today. <laughs> you can rip off my day, my idea. I give you full permission. Oh, you're both here. Still here. I didn't know that. Are you guys together? For those of you who don't know, Nona and Call a Priest, which is Aunt Candy, are sisters. Neither of which are actually related to me, but I don't have a grandma, so Nona adopted me. And then Aunt Candy just became Aunt Candy right away. So now they're family. I know. I was adopted for sure. <laughs> they adopted me right away. It's all good. Right. There's the dark part of the little bumblebee. I love this group. Thank you guys. See, that's what you get when you walk away from my live. We start talking about you. didn't win a prize, right? She probably walked away to get more coffee. She got a fancy schmancy coffee maker. I'm about to tell her, right? Speak of the devil. <laughs> I guessed it. <laughs> um, I should just go live with her and be her live-in barista. That would be fun. Although she's no fun. She just has lattes. I 
I'd be making her all kinds of macchiatos and fancy stuff. And she'd be like, what? Aw, thanks, Nona. That's so sweet. I'll give you your payment later for saying that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> See, look at that soft little bumblebee. Oh, I'm too far down. Marsha! Hey! I'm so excited to finally get to meet you in person. Oh my gosh, so excited. I get to meet Marsha. She's going to help us at the show in South Carolina. So, eek, so excited. Okay, second B. <sighs> so with the color deck swap, you get to do only two. Hey, Marsha, if you want to do the color deck swap, you can just bring it to South Carolina with you. I revealed it early because Holly wanted me to make these cards. And I didn't know what else I was going to do today. So my ill preparedness and Holly has revealed that these are the color deck swap for February is called Think Pink. And it can be as pink or as not pink as you want. Oh, <laughs> right, Michelle. <laughs> I get to meet Marsha's daughters. I'm so excited. They have been little crafters for a, I mean, since birth. And I get to give them a big old hug. And they're going to come and hang out with us in South Carolina at the show. She was like, I'm going to have the girls. And Sammy and I were like, uh, please bring them. So there you go. Okay. Again, my hand is probably blocking the entire view but I'm just barely touching the paper with this marker. You're ready. I'm ready too. I'm so ready. Okay, so this part is black, so that means this part's yellow. That means this part's black. And then yellow, and then black. I am using the Purple Label Sweet Sentiment Coloring Paper today. just in case y'all are wondering. And we're gonna shabby these up. Um, the reason is so that I can get that super fine line around it. Um, the, the more you press on the paper or the longer you leave the nib on the paper, the more ink that's gonna come out of your pen because the paper is porous, so it's always gonna soak in the ink. So the reason I barely touch the paper is so that I can keep those lines very fine. Good question. Michelle, you always ask the best questions. I'm very proud of you. You're such a consummate student. You want to learn everything and you want to know the, the reason why behind it. And I'm very much the same way. So I appreciate you asking the questions. Do you feel validated? <laughs> what wonderful paper, Drew. I just used it in my printer and it's the best, right? Um, because the paper is coated on the inside as opposed to coated around the outside, the um, printer ink actually penetrates the paper fibers and stains the paper fibers so that you don't have to worry about the printer ink running everywhere. So that makes for awesome printing and therefore awesome coloring. 
um, Marsha, for you, you do a lot of like watercolor and stuff, right? I'm going to bring you a sample of paper to South Carolina. And I want you to do all the things to it. I want you to like destroy it with all the techniques and tell me what you think. Okay. We'd be my guinea pig. Coloring his little bee bum. <laughs> Mission accepted. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Rolls up the sleeves. I'm ready to go. Put me in, coach. Put me in. My neighbor is... I have no idea what the heck he's doing over there, but he's being very noisy. Which is unlike them. They're usually not very noisy people. We have like the best neighbors, so I'm not complaining. It just makes me notice what's going on when they are actually noisy. The other day when it snowed like since six inches, he came over on his side by side and he put the um, a snow plow on the front of his side by side and did our driveway without me even like asking or anything. He just came over and plowed our whole driveway. And we have a ton of sidewalk around our house. Those of you who have been to our house have seen that we have like a ton of sidewalk down to the mailbox and around the corner because we live in the front. And whew, he, he plowed all that. All of it. Is Sandy here? My bestie showed up. Okay. So now I have these. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. The wings, what I'm going to do with the wings is um, I'm going to color them in in a little bit, um, but I'm just going to use a glitter pen. So just FYI, that's why they're not there. Um, I know it's crazy. It's a glittery French Manny, though. I don't generally do that, so. Um. Aww, <laughs> she's so sweet. Okay, so now we have our bees. So then what I want to show you is I'm going to take this stencil. This is the dark side stencil. And I like to use the moon scape as like just texture. So as of right now, I'm just adding little bits and I'm just using like the leftover ink that's on my brush. I haven't even pulled out any ink at all. So now, again, we're making them feel a little more vintage-y, vintage-esque. But, again, I'm trying to do the whole think pink thing. So what I'm going to do is, with this Victorian velvet, I'm going to go just kind of a light coat over the whole card. To tint that white I should show you before I do this one so it kind of colors that white and brings it down because we don't want this to be bright white and this is my Victorian velvet that I'm using so I know it's a very soft pale light color okay 
And again, I haven't pulled out any ink yet. I'm just using the residual ink that's on my brush. Um, right? <laughs> and now you have. And then with this one, I'm going to come around the outside. Say it, Michelle. Sing it, baby. Milligan, you can't let me down. I know you probably haven't had enough coffee yet, but you can totally sing it. Hi, bestie. I think I'm ready for inventory today. I don't know. You know me. I'm never ready for inventory today. Am I mesmerizing you guys? <laughs> okay. So then that is around the outside. So then what I'm going to do is I like to make some texture on these. These feel very untextured to me. So... of my mixed media stash, my texture medium, and then I'm going to grab some Lindy's sprays. So there's a couple of things here. So these are the magicals. These are powders. And I have a very soft vintage like pink type color. Oom pa pa pink is what it's called. Then I have this super bright pink. This is autumn maple crimson. It's like a fuchsia. So I'm going to do a couple of things. First things first, I'm going to grab some of my texture. I'm gonna set that somewhere. I'm gonna grab my pink and I'm gonna spray it. And then I'm gonna hope that I have a spatula somewhere close. Nope, but I'm gonna use this paintbrush. <laughs> and I'm gonna mix it all up. Look at how pretty that is. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add wherever I feel like it. Just for funsies. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, too special. You can use a stencil for this. You can just use a brush. You can use your finger. can be as extra as you want to be. I mean, not enough soda in my world. Oh, they're called Lindy's sprays. I'll show you what the other one does in just a second. So the reason I like to put texture around the outsides of these is because I want it to hold on to what I'm going to do with this. This is going to scare you guys because I'm going to spray water directly on top of my card. But the whole point of vintage type stuff is that it's not perfect anymore. It's, it's warm. And so I like to make these a little bit funky, a little bit worn.
So these are all activated by water. So now I'm just gonna kind of move these around, let them drip, let them get weird. And then I'm actually gonna use a piece of this cheesecloth. It's the Lindy's Magicals, so it's the powder form of what I just showed you. Magical shakers. And I wanna pick up some pink with this, so I'm gonna use this to pick up some of that liquid. So I'm doing two things at once. I'm cleaning up my liquid, but I'm also staining this pink. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick up some of this. Sandy's probably wondering who the heck abduct abducted me and made me do all this. This is Holly's fault. I blame Holly for all of it. Okay, so now I have this kind of different pink colors, which is awesome. So, finish that. Clean up my mess. Need to close the lid of that before I spill it everywhere. <laughs> Spray this. Million, there's Arch Archie. I was reading Holly's comment, messy. Okay. Now, take these, take this. I have this kind of blush pink ribbon. You guys know what I'm gonna do with that. We're gonna tie bows, so figure eight. to trim the ends of it while that's still on my fingers. It just makes it easier. Now I have a bow. I'm gonna do it again. Holly, does your Google Translate have um, dog barking in the background? I know, right, Sandy? Messy? Jamie? Weird. But notice my mess is, you know, contained. Like, my fingers are not all pink or anything yet, so that's good stuff. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to go back to these. Again, I don't like edges that are not distressed in some way. So I'm just going to use my vintage photo. And this is why I don't clean my brushes all the time. I only clean them quarterly or twice a year um, because I like to use the residual ink that is left on them. Because it's just enough to distress the edges of these. And I distress the edges of pretty much everything. I don't like um, a super clean, crisp edge, for some reason it makes it look unfinished to me. 
So you'll notice in almost all of my cards, almost everything I make, there's ink around the edges of it. I also have the lace and the back. I actually changed my mind. I think I'm going to put the flowers on the front. Nope, I'm not. Okay. So then I do need to pick up a little more ink so that I can distress the edges of this. Okay, you guys ready for assembly now? This is when the fun really begins. Oh wait, I gotta add my wings to my bees first. That was vintage photo, in case I didn't say that. So I'm gonna leave that brown down there because again, I don't mind things getting a little bit messy with this, um, but I do need to get my glitter pen Yes, this paper is from a really cool company. It is called Minte. Minte, and this is from the Places We Will Go book. Um, I got this at a shop in Florida, but they have a website. So, there you go. I really like their paper, and... I really like um, the quality of their paper. So I'm just using my glitter pen to trace in the wings. Yeah, this purple label paper does not do so hot with water. It's very fragile right now. And it's because the caliper of it is thinner. So, just a FYI. Okay. I'm gonna grab my white gel pen and I'm gonna add a highlight to his eye. Probably his other eye too. Okay. And now, we're gonna start putting all this stuff together. So, I'm gonna grab a little bit of hot glue because I know I'm gonna cover this. And I'm gonna put a couple of spots of hot glue on here. And I'm gonna glue down this cheesecloth. I forgot about the tabs, but I might have too much stuff going on to add the tabs, you know? Sweet pups. Tab schmabs. Right, Michelle? Thanks. Things are validating me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and just like Sandy, I use way too many sweet pops, and that's okay. Hi, 
can't get it. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to use my espresso to really push those on because some of them have to adhere through the cheesecloth. And so I want to make sure that I really get strong adhesion with them. Okay, now we're going to do this one. Must be the easy to peel off backing. Um, yes, they are fairly easy to peel off. Every once in a while you get one that is not, but... So who's going to join in this next um, color deck swap? And Marsha, the girls can join in too. They can do the ATC swaps and the color deck swaps, and you can just mail them all together if you want. Or you can bring them to South Carolina for this one. But they're absolutely welcome to do the swaps. And the color deck swaps are every other month on the even months. And the ATC swaps are every other month on the odd months. And they do not have to be in this involved, you guys. I, do, I just do over-the-top stuff because I'm live and doing these projects for you guys. So don't feel like you have to do something this crazy involved. They can be simple. They can be involved. They can be whatever you want them to be. Not I. Why not? You can do it, Michelle. Okay. So then... Oh, that's going to go at the bottom. Okay. So then I'm going to put a little spot of hot glue on the back of the bow. Hold them on there without burning my fingers. <laughs> I, tax season. Yeah, you're a tax girl, I know, so. Okay, so there's that. So I'm gonna take this and that's not quite pink enough for me. Ooh, I know. I'm gonna use worn lipstick and I'm just gonna drag this across the ink pad. And then picking up some of that vintage photo that's on there. And then forgive me for a moment while I use my heat gun. I know, it is a messy day. Okay, that's great. If you guys, if you girls want to join in, you're more than welcome to. We love it when the kiddos join in, so, and you got you girls are so creative. the way dry but it'll do 
Oops, and then I just put that in all the water. It's definitely going to look vintage after this, huh? See, look at how pretty that is. It's just like slightly pink. That's why I used that super bright pink because I knew it was going to wash out a lot. And then we're going to put this down here. So I'm going to go like that. Okay. Let's see, where am I going to put this? down and put it right across there. I like it. So I'm going to put a dot of glue right here and I'm going to be a smart cookie and I'm going to use my tweezers. And then I'm going to put a dot of glue right here. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so cool. Thank you, Holly. For being the inspiration. these off the edge. All right. Now, last thing, I'm going to see if I have anything cool in here that I want to add. Not in this one. I have these cool little keys. Those are very vintagey feeling. I have these cool flowers, that's kind of cool. Leaves, shapes, silverware, scissors. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the keys. Which Sandy probably could have guessed as soon as I pulled that out, she was probably like, oh my gosh. Gotta go. You want dots on it too, Milligan? Or are you just trying to keep me from being finished? So this has a little heart and this has a little heart. So we're gonna use those. Both. <laughs> You're like, don't go. There's a mail truck running on Sunday. Archie. Isn't it Sunday? Today is Sunday, right? Well, I don't even know what day it is. I should tell you about my life. Okay, so there's the keys. Now I stuck my finger to it, so there's my DNA. You're welcome. It is Sunday. Thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> okay, so then I'm probably gonna use matte dots. That light pink could work. And then the sticks and stones 
from Linda. Oh, I have this. Yeah, that pink's probably better. There is so many dots in our store, y'all. Oh, I like that one even better. So check out all the dots. I will tell you, in all honesty, these matte dots, they don't have as strong adhesion as the other ones. So when you do use the matte dots, you definitely need to glue them down. So I'm going to grab my Barely Art glue with my super cute glue pin. I wanted this one. Notice I twist my bottle first, and then I very softly pull the glue pin out. I clean it off. These glue pins are made out of nickel, so every once in a while you'll get some discoloration in your glue. That discoloration just simply means something foreign has gotten in there. So you just clean off the glue pin and the tip of your glue with um, an alcohol wipe and you're good to go. This is probably the most pink project I have ever made. Where's Lee when I need her? Oh, were they? I was thinking it's Monday. Good, I don't feel like I'm alone in my not knowing what day it is. I feel validated, Milligan, thanks. <laughs> Archie, honey. Okay. Woo woo. I know he is. He's very confused at the mailman on a Sunday as well. I mean, but do you blame him? Ooh, that went flying. I have no idea. Oh, there it is. I found it. Right, y'all. So once I stick my dots on here, oh, I need to remember to turn off my glue gun. Just saying, I don't always remember that part. And yes, I use a lot of dots. Okay. Two. I don't know what two means, Sandy. Thanks, Nona. Barry just got home from Costco. All right. Oh, how many cards do you have to make? Two? Yes, only two. There you go. So then I will write on the back of them. 
and um, they will be all ready for the swap. Again, this was a sneak peek to the swap. Um, Sandy and I are loving the AT Suite. Oh my gosh, ATC and Color Deck swaps, and we just want to make sure that you guys are loving them too. So, yes, Michelle, only two, and then you get two back. So it's not a difficult swap. Um, our ATC swaps are only nine and you get nine back. We did that because that's what one of those pages are that fits in the binders for the ATC cards. So, um, yeah. So anyways, color decks card swaps. This one does not post until February, but I wanted to give you guys a little heads up, um, because we really won't need and want the participation. So, um, you still have time to do your ATC swap with Sandy. If you can get it mailed here in the next couple of days, I got to get mine done really soon. Um, and the information for these, if you scroll up to the top of the sweet sentiment group that you're in right now, if you scroll up to the top and the posted, um, the pinned posts or the information posts or the focus posts, whatever they decided to call it this week, um, when you scroll up, it shows you and Sandy's right now at the top says friendly reminder. It's the first one under featured posts and the ATC swap is do your thing. So you can literally make anything you want out of the ATCs. Um, ATCs go to Sandy color decks comes to me. So, um, anyways, we would love for you guys to participate. We think it's so much fun. We enjoy doing them. We hope you enjoy doing them and we hope this inspires you to be creative. Um, there is not a gummy bear pin post. It's directly under the header. There's the header and then it says sweet sentiment stamps and friends. And then it'll say write something. So like, you know, whatever you're feeling that day or whatever. And then right under that it says featured. And that is the ATC swap. Like I said, this color deck swap is not posted. Um, you should, Joseph. You guys totally should, both of you. Um, this color deck swap is not posted because this is a sneak peek. This is, um, the color decks will be posted February 1st. So anyways, since I made these, I might make another set. Holly likes to make multiple sets because she likes to get more cards back. You only have to make two and you get two back. But Holly generally makes like eight or ten so that she can get eight or ten back. So it, however many you make is however many you'll get back. Not the case with the ATCs. You make nine, you get nine back. So anyways, that's how that works. So anyways, um, send me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the gummy bear pins. This one's blue raspberry. <laughs> Actually, this one's cotton candy and this one's blue raspberry. Anyways, so I will see y'all later. Thanks for joining me. And um, I will see you guys next weekend. I will be live on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. And um, Sandy will resume her lives on Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. So hers is 9.30 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mine is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. So that's 11 Central. Okay? So thank you guys. Uh, we appreciate you. We hope you're loving all the new little TikTok videos and stuff that we're posting. And we will see you again real soon. Have a happy Monday. Toodles.